All right, why don't we get started here? Thank you for coming. Uh, let's see, two housekeeping things. Uh, if you're doing the DevNet Loot Scoot, uh, the whole game thing, and you're participating to get uh, hats, shirts, water bottles, all sorts of stuff, make sure and scan the QR code, enter the, uh, the activity code, uh, and that will track you through uh, throughout, so you qualify for this stuff. Uh, second thing is, if you're not already a member of DevNet, go to developer.cisco.com, register, it's easy. Um, and up at the, uh, uh, at the help desk, there are a couple of stations there if you want to register. So Derek uh, and Josh, you guys, go. All right, um, so my name is Derek. Uh, I'm joined by my colleague Josh today. Today we'll go through uh, not a deep dive, because half an hour is a, it's a bit too short. Just a quick intro into the Cisco WAN automation, WAN automation engine. Um, what, do we, what do we actually do? Uh, basically, for our product, we first build a predictive model. So through um, SNMP CLI, we collect basically the topology and utilization of your network, and then we build this network model. And from that network model, we can do all the what-if analysis, um, capacity analysis, optimization kind of algorithms. Next thing is, each model represents a snapshot in time. So as we collect more and more snapshots over time, we build a time series kind of like data, data store, right? And with that data store, we then can look at historical analysis of trends of your network, you know, whether capacity is increasing. And we can predict, like, in one month, do you think this circuit is going to be uh, over your threshold utilization? Right? Next thing we do is we expose all this capability of the model and the analysis through REST-based APIs. So in effect, giving you uh, access to the data through the REST uh, API interface to do any kind of configuration, manipulation, optimization that you want to do with, with that data. So first off, I'm just going to run through a bunch of the modules that we have within the WAN automation engine. Um, right at the bottom there, you see our collector. Right now, it's based off SNMP CLI mostly, but we also do net flow collection to enhance the, the information we get. We also do BGPLS-based collection as well. And with that collection of data, we then build what I call the network model. So basically, a network model is, a, is an overlay of both the topology information as well as the SNMP information of the utilization that we get from your network. Once we have that network model in your network, we then are able to do all the algorithms that I talked about earlier. So be it the optimization and predictive analytics, uh, collection of your time series data in the, in the anal analytics, uh, analytics kind of uh, area, and then also calendaring. So future predictions of if I were to put this demand on the network, how will how this traffic flow based on the current topology and the current statistics that I have. And once we have that network model that we, that we want, the future state, we then can decide whether we want to deploy that network model to the network itself. So right now, we support both uh, PSAP and uh, template-based configuration. Uh, in the upcoming release in uh, July, we will also include um, TLF as a way to configure your network uh, using the WAN automation engine. Over on the top, uh, what you see is uh, some of the applications uh, that we have running right now. Basically, with the event automation engine, as I mentioned earlier, we expose all that capability to a REST API. So um, developers or any programmers could basically write code to talk to, to the event automation engine and extract that information and use that information in terms of how they want their program to run. So what we, what we have right now is a, a design app as well as a live app, so basically a, a kind of like a performance management-based uh, system. So right now, basically, the, the, the way we envision our product is based off the two um, apps that we have right, right now that's uh, highlighted in green, we want to expand that capability. So those are the apps that we are looking in the future in terms of uh, the, the red apps. Uh, so things like bandwidth calendaring, um, segment routing, tunnel builder. Those are apps that are either work in progress or we, are, we have it on the roadmap to be introduced in a, in a future release. So right now, I'm going to get Josh to kind of like step you through some of the examples that we have. So what we'll do is we run through demos, and uh, Josh will kind of like talk through it. Thank you. OK, can you all hear me? 
All right. So I'm just going to run through a, a few quick demos. Um, this first demo is about um, uh, coordinated maintenance. So when you take a router out of service, what's going to be the impact to your network? Uh, can you take multiple routers out um, and schedule events on top of each other at the same time? Uh, the next one is segment routing. Uh, I'll show you how uh, we can use our software to uh, add the minimum number of segment routing tunnels needed to support a given traffic amount. And uh, the last one is some multi-layer um, uh, a multi-layer demo. So I'll just walk through these. Okay. So what we're looking at here is the UI for the coordinated maintenance application. Uh, this is basically the dashboard. It tells me all the uh, current maintenance events that I have scheduled or pending, um, you know, uh, and a short description of what they are, when they start, when they end, and uh, whether or not they passed validation. By validation, what we do is we simulate their impact on the network. Uh, in accordance with the other uh, maintenance events that we have as well. So what I'm showing here is uh, I clicked on an event, and I'm showing you uh, the max utilization threshold that I had defined for this particular event, and also the max utilization uh, based on our simulations that actually resulted, and which is why this one passed. And here we see the selected nodes I had taken down for maintenance. And also a congestion report. OK, so let's go through the process of creating a new event. So I'll go up to the top here and I'll click Create New Event. And there's a series of steps that I have to walk through. I have to uh, give my event a name and a description. And I define that threshold that I mentioned before, which is um, whether or not this event will pass or fail if any interface exceeds 90%. And I'm going to change this to another value. Let's say 30%. And again, I can sort and easily find the nodes just by clicking and uh, start typing the node name. And I'm, I'm going to select a number of nodes. And I'm also going to uh, choose an interface here in a second and just show you that as well. So there's the node and the interface on that node. And I click Next. Now I'm going to select the date and the amount of time that I want this maintenance event to occur. And so I set this one for four hours. I click Next. And after it's done processing, it gives me a uh, a lot of information here in the output, it gives me a summary of what I entered. And it also tells me if there's any overlapping events that, that correspond with this. So we see there's another event that's scheduled at the same time. And as I scroll down uh, and I look at congestion report, um, there's no other unscheduled. Okay, so now let's take a look at one of these that failed. Uh, here's a maintenance event that, that wasn't able to go through. And we can click here and find out why it wasn't able to. So here's the event. And as I scroll down, I see that I have a number of, uh, of congestion. Uh, and as I sort this column, I see that it violated my congestion. I have a max of 35. And these are, it was violated with this first one. And again, this is, an, this is an application that was built on top of the WAN automation engine that uses uh, you know, that predictive analysis model that Derek had mentioned before, as well as calendaring. OK, so this next demo is segment routing. So with this, I use the offline tool, uh, Way Design, to get a model from the WAN automation engine and I'm going to show you visually uh, the algorithm behind um, adding the minimum SR tunnels needed to support or to lower uh, utilization on an interface. 
So this is from the offline tool. I open from the WAN automation engine. And this uses a REST API to ask Way, give me the current model of the network. So here's my current network. And I see that I have an interface here that, uh, that is 80% utilized. But also I'd like to point out that there's no LSPs in my network. So I'll jump to my router. And after I log in, I do a show MPLS trap edge tunnels. And I don't have any tunnels. OK. So now I want to use a tool that will add the minimum number of SR tunnels needed to bring this 80% down to a lower level. And you can imagine if that's higher than 80, if it's like 95 or 98, it would do the same thing. And so in this circumstance, it says that if I had one SR tunnel along that lower route, I could deploy it and, uh, and relieve that congestion. <laughs> so now I'd, I'd send this back to the WAN automation engine, and it's going to deploy this on my network. Yes, it's using PSAP. Yeah. Yeah, as, as Derek just mentioned, our current implementation of SR uh, uses PSAP uh, to deploy. I mean, there's no TLF uh, at, at this point for, for SR based uh, implementations, that's right. And so here's my uh, segment routed tunnel. And I see when it was created, it was created by my server, and there are the segment hops, segment node hops. OK, and the last demo that we're going to run through is one on, on, on multi-layer planning. So here's my network again. And here's my layer one network. Now, we, we incorporate both models, both uh, topologies in the same model. So we could do something and see, for example, uh, for worst case, there's some failure on the network at layer one that causes all this purple at layer three. So to find out what that is, I can right click on one of these interfaces and fail to worst case. And it will show me the layer one failure that caused that, uh, over that packet drops at layer three. And I see that if that, if that uh, one layer one interface fails, then all three of my layer one circuits go down here. OK, so now I'm going to run a tool called multi-layer design. What this tool does is it optimizes my network, keeping both topologies the same, but just increasing the capacity at layer three uh, to see uh, how much I would need to add and where I would need to add it to get rid of all this purple in the worst case scenario. And so I select my layer one uh, links to analyze. And when I run uh, simulation analysis again, I see that I took all those purple links um, by increasing the capacities of layer three uh, at those specific areas. Um, this is the worst case before, and there's the worst case after. So what's the cost of this? So we have a tool called uh, Network Cost Calculator that'll run through and it'll tell you, it'll generate a bill of materials and let you know um, what the delta between the two. So when I was recording this video, I took a screenshot of this number because this is the first scenario we're going to run through. So uh, then I can compare the two later. So the second scenario I'd like to examine is 
what can I change in my topology at layer three? Can I add a new circuit between different nodes? And would that save me any cost savings? So I had selected my nodes, I had, I had tagged them in my file, and I'd, I'm going to examine the adjacencies between those. Okay, I'm going to run through the same analysis again. And what we see here is that I added a new circuit between New York and Atlanta that wasn't there in the original file. And so now when I run the network cost calculator again, it lets me know what the, what the cost is of adding that circuit. And this is a, a CapEx cost. And so just comparing the two scenarios here, I see that there's a bigger savings by adding that circuit as opposed to uh, just increasing the capacities. Okay, so just to point out some of our other events here at Cisco Live, um, we'll be in the World of Solutions. We'll be at the SDN Apps Pod. Uh, we have a bunch of learning labs for Way uh, that get you hands-on with the API. Today we showed you a bunch of examples of things you can do with the API, uh, but if you really want to uh, program some stuff in Python and experiment with the APIs and see what you get back, we have learning labs that take you through all that. And uh, we have upcoming sessions tomorrow that will go into more detail. Uh, and on Tuesday, and we have a mini workshop on Wednesday. And uh, if you want to get started with the uh, WAN Automation Engine uh, yourself, just log in with your Cisco.com account to dCloud, and you can launch any of the demos and run the APIs against that demo as well from anywhere in the world. So are there any questions that... Uh, Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for attending, and uh, enjoy the rest of your Cisco Live. <laughs>